Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I've been wondering, trucks aren't saving gas, but what's saving Christmas? Regardless, trucks have become a backbone of modern commerce, moving goods across cities, states, and countries, playing a critical role in the global economy. However, their design, particularly the height of their bumpers, presents a significant safety issue that has persisted since the early days of trucking. These high bumpers can do a little bit of damage to smaller vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. For the last two, serious damage means perishing. So today, I'm gonna yap about the old history of them trucks, how they evolved, from, and some sick nasty doodads called people catchers, which is what I call my van. But those are a little bit different. So well, let's get into it. So, the concept of the truck dates back to the old 19th century, which when, was when people began to think, what if we like burned coal and stuff? And the stuff that they were making needed to be transported, of course. In 1896, Gottlieb Daimler, a pioneering German engineer, introduced what is widely considered the first gasoline-powered truck. This early truck was a modest vehicle by today's standards, featuring a 4-horsepower engine and a belt-driven system. However, it represented a significant leap forward in transportation technology. Daimler's invention laid the foundation for the modern truck. So as the internal combustion engine, which is what they call my stomach after Taco Bell, improved and the demand for efficient transportation grew, trucks evolved rapidly. By the early 20th century, trucks were becoming more common on the roads, especially in Europe and the United States. The vehicles needed to grow in size and power, and they sure did. They were capable of carrying heavier loads over longer distances. This increase in size led to the development of larger chassis and higher bumpers to accommodate the growing demands on these vehicles. Initially, the high bumpers on trucks were a practical design feature. They allowed for greater ground clearance, which was necessary for navigating uneven terrain and poorly maintained roads. Additionally, higher bumpers made it easier for trucks to clear obstacles and reduce damage done to the vehicle when driving over rough surfaces. However, as trucks became more integrated into urban environments, the safety implications of high bumpers began to emerge. And then the... As trucks became larger and more prevalent, the height of their bumpers began to pose serious risks and collisions, particularly with smaller vehicles and pedestrians. The primary problem with high bumpers is that they can override the protective structures of smaller vehicles, such as crumple zones and airbags, which are designed to absorb the impact of a collision. Insert your mama joke here. When a truck with a high bumper collides with a car, the bumper can slide over the car's protective front end and penetrate the passenger compartment, leading to devastating injuries or extermination. The issue is exacerbated in urban areas, where trucks often share the road with pedestrian cyclists and smaller vehicles. In collisions with pedestrians, high bumpers are especially dangerous because they tend to whack some more vital parts of human function, you know, like the head or neck, whereas smaller cars hit things that aren't as needed, like pff, legs. Furthermore, the height of the bumper can cause a pedestrian to be pulled under the truck's wheels, often resulting in the expiration of the victim. High truck bumpers are also more of a threat to cyclists and motorcyclists than I am to schools. In a collision, a high bumper can cause the rider to be thrown from their vehicle or works to be dragged underneath the truck. The risks are particularly high in situations where trucks are turning or merging, as these maneuvers often lead to blind spots that prevent the truck driver from seeing smaller road users. However, there is an upside to all of this, and it's helped me get my new high score. Because everyone got to ordering Amazon packages, trucks became essential for moving goods over land, especially in areas where railroads were not accessible. However, as trucks became more common on the roads, so did accidents involving these large vehicles. During the early days of trucking, the roads were shared by a mix of horse-drawn carriages, bicycles, pedestrians, and these new motorized vehicles. The disparity in size and speed between these different types of road users led to a rise in accidents, many of which caused demise. Truck accidents were particularly alarming because of the sheer size and weight of these vehicles, which really gave the victims a good tossing, like a salad. Nummy num num guys, eat up, human salad! 
In response to the increasing number of accidents, some security cats implemented the safety measures to mitigate the dangers posed by trucks. One of the most notable inventions of this era was the people catcher or pedestrian scoop. Now, unlike my kid's Nature 3000, this wasn't labeled as a threat by the FBI. In fact, it was a safety device designed to prevent pedestrians from being run over by trucks. This device was typically mounted on the front of the truck, close to the ground. Yeah, that's definitely above an average height from the ground, but it was intended to catch or push a pedestrian out of harm's way in case of a collision. The people catcher was a metal framework that extended downwards from the front of a truck, resembling a scoop or basket. The idea was that if a pedestrian was struck by the truck, the people catcher would get them out of the way, preventing them from being pulled under the vehicle's wheels. People catchers were relatively common on trucks in the early 20th century, particularly in urban areas where pedestrian traffic was heavy. However, as truck designs became more involved and became more streamlined, the people catcher gradually fell out of favor. The focus on a vehicle design shifted towards efficiency and cargo capacity, often at the expense of pedestrian safety. The abandonment of safety devices like the people catcher had significant benefits. As trucks continued to grow, the issue of high bumpers remained, and it only got worse. The increasing number of accidents involving trucks and vulnerable road users showed that the industry largely prioritized other aspects of vehicle design, such as fuel efficiency and load capacity. And trust me, I know a lot about load capacity. In the latter half of the 20th century, the problem of high truck bumpers kind of stuck around, and the consequences would become more severe. Studies show that accidents involving trucks and smaller vehicles or pedestrians were more likely to result in a departure from life when the truck had a high bumper. While these may have increased the driver's score, it was not looking good if you're a pedestrian. Despite there being more advances in the automotive safety technology than advances toward me from the ladies, these features are often rendered ineffective in collisions with high bumper trucks. The height disparity between the bumpers of trucks and passenger vehicles means that the safety systems designed to protect occupants in crashes are bypassed, leading to catastrophic outcomes. And that's why there are... In recent years, the issue of high truck bumpers has gained renewed attention from safety advocates and regulatory bodies. The increasing number of trucks on the road, driven by the growth of e-commerce and the demand for goods transportation, has brought this issue to the forefront of road safety discussions. The rise in delivery trucks in urban areas has particularly highlighted the dangers these vehicles pose to pedestrians and cyclists. One of the key challenges in addressing this issue is the lack of standardized regulations regarding bumper height. While some areas have introduced guidelines to reduce the height of truck bumpers or require the installation of underride guards, these measures are not universally adopted. In many regions, truck manufacturers and operators are still able to prioritize other design considerations over safety, and that's what I like to hear. However, these underride guards, which are designed to prevent smaller vehicles from sliding underneath a truck in a collision, have been mandated in some countries for the rear of trucks. However, the front and side underride guards, which can mitigate the dangers posed by high bumpers, are less commonly required. Safety advocates argue that these guards should be mandatory on all trucks, as they have the potential to save lives in the event of a crash. In addition to physical safety measures, there is also a push for the technological solutions to address the risks posed by high truck bumpers. Advanced driver assistance systems such as automatic emergency braking, lane departure warnings, and pedestrian detection systems can help prevent collisions in the first place. By equipping trucks with these technologies, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of accidents and mitigate the severity of those that do occur. With all that said, there are some people who are... Given the ongoing challenges associated with high truck bumpers, some safety advocates have suggested revisiting the concept of people catchers or developing modern equivalents. While the original people catcher devices were pretty silly, advancements in material sciences and engineering could lead to more effective and less obtrusive safety devices for the front of trucks. For example, 
The modern people catchers could be designed using a lightweight, impact absorbing material that minimizes harm to pedestrians while preventing them from being pulled under the truck. These devices could be integrated into the design of the truck's bumper or installed as an aftermarket addition. And that's why I'm proposing my idea for the people catcher, or what I like to call a massive flipping shark taped to the front of your car. Since a shark has got more predatory instincts than Dr. Disrespect and EDP-445 combined, this is a perfect catch for people of all ages. Person in the way? Chomp! Those pesky government agents saying, Sure, you can't speak out here, this is Area 51. Chomp! I'm telling you guys, this is going to be the wave of the future. So, I think that brings us to the... Uh... The history of trucks and their design evolution reveals a long-standing issue with the height of their bumpers, which continues to pose significant safety risks to smaller vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. While early safety innovations like the people catcher demonstrated an awareness to, of these dangers, the eventual abandonment of such devices has left a gap in protection that still persists to this day. Thanks for watching till the end and tolerating my bad jokes. Goddamn liberals taking away my freedom on the road. I'll show them. Try taking my truck when it's coming at you with a shark on it. Kids these days, I swear they're a bunch of snowflakes.